Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to make this custom billiard ball image. Before creating it, you should first familiarize yourself with the 3D feature in CS6 Extended. Check out my in-depth tutorial on 3D by clicking here. This document is 1000 by 1000 pixels with a resolution of 150 pixels per inch. Call up your gradient tool and click on the gradient box. The gradient editor will open. Click on the foreground to background thumbnail. The left side of our gradient bar is black, which is what we want. Go to the middle of the bar and click under it. This creates a new stop. We'll type in 50% in the location, which places it right in the middle. Click on the color box and type in 063A04. Click OK and click on the lower right stop. This time, we'll type in 0E5A08. Close out the windows, go to the top, press Shift, and drag out a line to the bottom, then Release. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Texture folder and choose Texturizer. We'll use Sandstone, Scaling's 100%, Relief 2, and the lights from the top. Let's make it gradually blur as it gets closer to the top to simulate depth of field in a photo. Call up your blur tool and choose a large brush. I'm using 400 points, the blend mode is normal, and the strength 80%. Now brush over the top half and add a few extra strokes as it gets closer to the top. Click on the new layer icon to make a new layer. Let's fill it with white, and since white is our background color, press Ctrl or Command plus Delete. Make a new layer, and call up your rectangular marquee tool. Drag out a rectangle approximately a third of the width of your document. Click on the foreground color, and choose a color for the stripe of your billiard ball. To fill the selection with this color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. To center your stripe on your document, press Ctrl or Command plus A to select it all. Call up your Move tool and click on the Align Vertical icon. To delete the selection, press Ctrl or Command plus D. Make a new layer and call up your elliptical marquee tool. Go to the center and press Shift and Alt or Shift and Option and drag out a circle. Fill it with white and select all. Call up your move tool and click the align horizontal icon and the align vertical icon. Delete the selection and call up your type tool. Open your character panel. If you don't see it, go to window and choose character. There's no one particular font that's used on billiard balls, so choose your own. For this example, I'm using Arial Black. Click on the color box and choose black. Click on your document and type in a number. As you probably know, each color of a billiard ball does have a specific corresponding number, but since this is a custom ball, I'll use the age of the person this ball is for. To reposition it, call up your move tool, click on the number and move it. In order to keep the number and the white circle stay in proportion to their respective shapes in 3D, Photoshop requires that we squeeze their width. I find that 50% works well. In order to do this, go to the circle layer and press Shift. Click down and this highlights both the number and the circle. Press Ctrl or Command plus T to call up the Transform tool and go to the top and change the width to 50%. Then press Enter or Return. Call up your Type tool and click above the number. We're going to customize this ball more. This time I'll choose Arial Bold. I'll make the point size 16 and the tracking 0. The tracking is the space between each letter. Type out your text and use your Move tool to reposition it. Call back up your Type tool and type out your bottom line. Go to the white layer and press Shift to highlight all the layers in between. Go to 3D, New Mesh from Layer, Mesh Preset, and Sphere. If this window appears, click Yes. Click anywhere outside the ball and drag it around until the grid 
which is the ground plane, is in the perspective you want. Click on the ball and inside you'll see this widget. To save time, I won't be going over its functions here. I covered this in depth in my earlier tutorial. Rotate your ball to the angle you like and click on the Slide the 3D Object icon. I'll drag it forward on its z-axis and go to 3D and Snap Object to Ground Plane to make sure it's not floating. Click on Show All the Materials icon. I'll slide the shine temporarily between 60 to 65 percent and the reflection temporarily between 45 to 50 percent. This is the image I'll use to reflect on the ball. When you choose an interior, you'll find that some may work better than others. If you want to use this one, I provided the link to it in the video descriptions area so you can download it directly. In the Properties panel at the bottom in the Environment folder, choose Load Texture. Locate the image in your computer and click on it. Now adjust the shine and reflection. Click on the lights icon. We're going to create three infinite light sources. The first light will be the main source of illumination. Click on the handle and rotate it so the light is shining at an angle on the front of the ball. I'll make the intensity 60% and the shadow softness 25%. Click on the icon next to the trash can and we'll choose infinite light again. Rotate the handle so the light is shining almost straight up onto the bottom. This will be our bounce light and will have the weakest intensity. I'll make the intensity between 30 to 35 percent and then click on the color box. I'll choose a light green which simulates the reflected color of the pool table. We'll create a third infinite light and rotate it to the other side of the ball but still illuminating the front at an angle. We'll give this more intensity than the bounce light but less intensity than the main light. We'll soften the shadow to 25 percent. Go to 3D and render. The rendering time varies from computer to computer so it might take a while. We now have a fully rendered billiard ball with custom text, reflections and a glossy finish. I'll now show you how to make a second billiard ball behind it. Open the Layers panel and make a copy of the billiard ball. We'll hide the top layer by clicking off the eyeball and click on the layer under it to make it active. Double click on the sphere material which opens up the original elements that we used to wrap around the 3D object. Hide the custom text layers and click on the number to make it active. Highlight the custom text and type in a real number of the billiard ball. Scroll to the color stripe and press Control or Command and then click on it. This will call up its selection. Click on the foreground color and choose the color that corresponds to the number you just typed in. I'm using yellow since the nine ball is that color. To fill the selection with that color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Delete the selection. The ball automatically updates itself with a new number and color. Call up your Move tool and open your 3D panel. Click on the icon for the 3D mesh and extrusions. Rotate the ball on different axes and drag it back in space. To ensure it's resting right on the surface, go to 3D and Snap Object to Ground Plane. Go to 3D and Render. For this ball, it's not necessary to fully render it since we're going to blur it. After a few passes, open your Layers panel and click back on the eyeball of your first billiard ball to make it visible, but don't click on the layer to make it active. Keep your second billiard ball layer active. Go to Filter and Convert for Smart Filters. Click OK and go to Filter, Blur and Gaussian Blur. We'll blur it by 2.5 pixels. Give someone you know who loves billiards or pool a fun gift of a personalized billiard ball. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.